Okay, be patient. Ah, oh, I don't know. Oh, look, I'm upside down. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know. I don't know what it is. We had rain, but now it's... And let's see if it's working now. Um, we had rain, and then it stopped raining. Now you got my... Oh, Lord. I hope they can edit some of this. What do you think? All right. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to flip you around for a minute, and I'll chat with you for a second. And then we'll get right to painting, okay? So let me flip you around. Ah, there you all are. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. I know we'll get more as we're going. I'm going to go through everything step by step with you. I'm going to watch the comments as much as I can. Whatever I don't answer, I will answer after, I promise. I don't know why the last live ended. If it does, I don't know if it's the weather. I'll come right back on, I promise. So don't worry about that. Um, I guess we should just start. All right, if you have any questions, ask me. I'm happy to help you. I'm going to talk. I'm going to show you my piece, but I'm going to talk. I'm going to flip you around now, okay? So be patient. Look, that's my uh, messy studio. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to put you in my... Okay, so... Okay. I don't know why it's doing that. Hmm. All right, we're going to keep trying. I don't know why it's, it's pausing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this piece. Now, I had a lot of fun with this piece because it's very repetitious and it's fun. So there's a million things you can put it on. I wear a lot of smocks. So just, just an example. I buy men's shirts in the stores and I did it down the front of a smock. Okay, so then I can paint in it and whatever. So I did the same thing, and then I just floated some blue out here. But I just did it down the side. You can do it on a big shirt. You can do it on pants. You can do it on pouches. Um, there's so many things you can do it on. All right, so tonight I'm going to do it on a bag. And... When I gave you the supply list, my supply list said any colors because you really could use any colors. Okay, so when I start, now, you can do this before, you can do this after. It really makes no difference. All right, sometimes I do it before because I want to be done, and sometimes I do it after. Okay, so I have an identipen. That looks like this. It's a permanent marker. It has two sides. One side, paint in it. One side is thin, one side is thick, okay? These are permanent. Sharpies say they're permanent, they're not. Microns say they're permanent, they're not. This you can wash. So all I do is I come in and I'm just lining. Now, it makes no difference if this is done before or after, okay? This can be done after you paint it. I just wanted to show you both ways. Sometimes I'm busy and I don't get a chance. Here, let me do it so it's this way. I don't get a chance to do it before. So does it make any difference? No, it doesn't make any difference. If you line it first, when you're done painting, you are done. It's a finished piece. 
which I love. Now, I used a sulky pen that looks like this to transfer my pattern. What I did is, oh, let me, I took a piece of tracing paper, I traced my piece, I put it on the back, and then I turned it over. So just say, this is a different one. But here's my pattern. I use my silky pen and I trace. I flip it over and I iron it. That will give me these lines. Now, the good thing about the silky pen, and you can put it on any way, I find that the easiest. The good thing about that is that you can transfer eight, nine, ten, depending on what fabric it's on. So you can do a whole bunch of them. Okay. And I just line. So now I have my sections. I will sign my piece. And I do that in marker. So I'm right here. Okay, that can be washed. So you can wash your piece um, with this marker. If you use, hi Brenda, if you use a Sharpie that says it's permanent, when you wash, it will run all over. You don't want that, so just be careful. So on the Sulky, you have these lines, and I don't always get it. Let me see if I can get it closer. So you can see that this line from the pen is still here, and I went offline. Oh, okay. You're time delayed behind me. No, I gotta go this way, sorry. So you can see that where it's not. So this will fade in time. So if it doesn't fit perfectly, don't worry about it. It will fade. All right, so what I'm going to do is I have my palette. I use DecoArt Enchanted Shimmer. If you don't have Enchanted Shimmer, you can use Glamour Dust, which looks like this. Okay. Either one is fine. Oh, we're backwards, aren't we? Oh, no. Okay. So you can use Glamour Dust. That's fine, either one. It's very glittery. I don't know if you could tell that from the picture, but there's never too much glitter in my world. So I'm gonna take some Enchanted Shimmer. I use white. You can use this gold. I'm gonna take some Glamour Dust glitter and I'm gonna add it. And that's simply because, can you see what that looks like? That's simply because I want it real glittery. I'm just gonna mix it. You don't have to do that. I just like a lot of sparkle. Somebody once told me I like bling. And I didn't think so, but sometimes I do. Now, the only thing I will say, hey Bev, hey Marie. The only thing I will say is that one wing should match the other. So does it have to? No, should it? Yes. So if you do pink here, do pink here. I don't know why you're sideways. I'll try to fix that. Let me see if I do it this way, if that'll fix it. All right, so I'm gonna take a flat brush. I don't really care what size. I put two sizes down so that one is, um, when you have really small areas, if you wanna use the smaller one, you can but any flat brush will do. I'm gonna pick a color. So in this case, I'm going to do, uh, let's do some green. I'm gonna do bright avocado. Now, if you don't have fabric paint, I use Deco Art So Soft, always. If you don't have fabric paint, you can use Americana with fabric medium. The, you have to put the fabric medium in when it touches raw fabric. So I'm going to come in. Let me just do something. I have it clipped to a board because it's easier. But 
I don't think I'm keeping it on camera as much. Let me take it off my board. It's just easier to move around when it's clipped. Do you have to clip it? Absolutely not. But I think I can get it better in the camera without. Maybe. I'm a mess tonight, huh? Sorry about that. I haven't been alive in a long time. Okay. And I can move it around a little better. A little easier for you. Okay, so here I am. I'll start on this side. I'm gonna load my whole brush in the Enchanted. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do one section at a time. So I'm going to paint this section. Now, you can see on the screen that there's a lot of glitter, but I like a lot of glitter. If you don't like a lot of glitter, don't use a lot of glitter. That doesn't matter. And if you don't like any glitter, just use fabric medium. DecoArt has fabric medium. Just use fabric medium. And um, I don't wanna say wet, but base coat this area. So now this area is base coated. I'm gonna take my paper towel. I'm just gonna pinch out. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna just corner load. So I'm gonna hold it this way and I'm gonna just load the corner of the brush. So you can see, let me see if we could do it that way, that I just have a little bit of paint on there. I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna do this so that I'm taking off the excess, but I have a lot of paint on there. That's what we call a side load. And I'm just gonna come in as if we were floating. My brush is flat. All my bristles are on my surface. So I'm not on the side of the brush like this. I want to blend it in and I want it to graduate in. So we're naturally, and turn your piece so that it's comfortable for your hand. Naturally, creating our highlights. We're giving our color, but we're creating our highlights. Now be careful. If you get it anywhere else on the fabric, it's there forever. Now you can decide. Well, let's move over here. I'm gonna rinse, because I don't want the green on here. I'm gonna pick up my mixture. I didn't draw these the same, did I? Hmm. I'm gonna come up like this. I gave this an extra section here. Oh well. It'll be fun anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do the same color because I want my wings to match. Okay, so I'm here. And if you're only doing one side of the butterfly, then it doesn't matter because you don't have another side to match. I'm gonna side load. I should get the pen. All right, Debbie, just message me. I'm gonna side load. And I'm just going to blend just a little bit so that I don't have this big blob. And I'm gonna come and I'm here. Same exact thing. Now this section is gonna have to be a different section simply because I drew that in. I wasn't paying attention. If you put paint on the whole brush, you're going to paint the whole side. You will have no highlight. And that's the whole point of this technique is to have the highlight to naturally create the highlight. This is how we're gonna do this whole piece. Okay. Now I have to decide. Do I want this whole section green? Or do I just want the edges green? So for the sake of this, and as you guys paint them, I would love to see them. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. 
it's not me it's the library the library has opened this up to you all i wish i could take credit but i can't so you have to like look at it now you could say this is green uh, tony and one second i'll go through it again you could do the whole thing green. You could do purple. You could do this section green, this section purple, this section red. Just match, and that's fine. So Tony asked me, and I'll go through it again just so you guys know. I took Enchanted Shimmer, and I put some out. Because I wanted more glitter, I added Glamour Dust. You do not have to. And if you don't like the glitter, then just use Fabric Medium. So I think I'm gonna do this section purple. My purple is lavender, okay? And that's why I said any colors will work, but I'm not gonna do this whole wing. Let me do it this way. I don't know why it's sideways. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna base this whole section. I want this whole section to be coated. And Tony, you came in late. So what I said before is you can line the lines with an identi pen or you cannot. That's you know, you can do it afterwards. It doesn't matter, you know. And I'm going to I'm keeping the paint on my brush on the corner. I'm picking up the purple, a little tap. Now Every section could be different. So here I did the top. Here I might do the edge and walk it out. But I want to leave a natural highlight. You see that? Every time that I do a new section, I clean my brush. Because when I put my mixture down, my glitter down... I don't want to have purple in the brush or any color in the brush. I want to leave the highlights natural. So I come in and I'm base coating. And we're going to be very repetitious tonight. Um, so I came in and I'm here. And then I'm going to stay purple. I'm going to do this whole section purple. And I tap. Now I did this section, so maybe I'll come and, and I see how heavy that is. And I did that on purpose. So when I put that down, it's very heavy. Now I'll come in and my paint is still towards where I put it and I'll blend it so that it's nice and smooth and it's graduating. So see how that's graduating down? And that's how you keep that color, okay? The answer to that, Marie, is no. You, Marie asked if you can put all the white down and then add the color. And the reason you can't do that is because this needs to stay wet. Besides the fact you'll probably take your hand and go like this. But not long this will be too dry here to add the color to it what will happen is if it's dry when you come and you put this color in it'll look like this there'll be nothing wet to blend into now when you get to these sections i'm using a 10. um and this is a Dynasty brush. This is a, a series called Eye of the Tiger. I use, I love these brushes and I love the faux squirrel brushes, but I use them with a lot of glitter because I don't really care if I ruin them. I won't ruin them because I keep cleaning it, but this gives me the option to not use my really good brushes because if you take care of your brushes, they will last you forever. So I'm here. 
and I'm out of mixture, but we're gonna make this work. And I don't mix a lot of mixture at the same time. I mix some, and then I'll pick up purple. And I don't know, I'll pick and I'll choose. So I might do this side. And I just blend it and you can pull it out as long as you're blending. And then I'll do this side. Now my pressure, if I have to say from one to 10 is a nine. A heavy eight or a nine and I put a lot of pressure because I really want to blend it in okay I'm leaving my natural highlights but I'm only side loading the brush okay so now, for anybody that came in late, because I have to mix more anyway. I use Enchanted Shimmer, which is by DecoArt. You can use Glamour Dust Paint also. And I do puddle like that. I want more glitter, so I add Glamour Dust Fine Glitter. And I just pile it in there. There's not a one to, it's not a ratio. I just like a lot of glitter. Don't add so much that you lose the liquid because you need the liquid. I mix with my palette knife. Never mix with your brushes. Always with your palette knife. And I don't know if you can see it. I can see it shimmers. I can see the glamour dust in here. Okay. Then I'm going to go back. And I'm going to keep working in purple. Okay. I'm going to pick up the glitter mixture. It'll get a little boring for a minute because I'm using the same color. But I've done a lot of pieces like this. Um, you can do flowers, you can do animals, you can do, well, there's so much you can do. I'm happy you're all spending time with me. Our library is closing for renovations. So my class in person tonight doesn't have a building <laughs> to host in. So we're here. But next month we're back in person. So anybody who's local that's here, we're at the Herkimer Center next month. Um, I don't remember what we're doing, I'll be honest with you. Uh, oh, yes, I do. We're doing a lighthouse. We're doing a lighthouse. So, this is a great piece to do. You can do it on canvas. You can do it. And you can use so soft fabric on canvas, by the way. So, you can do it on a t-shirt. You can do it, like I said, on a smock. Yep. I have a lump there. You can do it on pillow. I'm on a pillow kick right now. I'm making pillows for my daughter's wedding. So I'm on a pillow kick. So these are a lot of fun to do because you can get really great results. And you see, I just keep brushing until I blend it. But I'm only on the corner of the brush, so I'm not filling in that whole section. Okay. <laughs> oh, Vincent, I miss you too. I haven't seen you. Maybe I'll see you at Herkima. Well, come see me. Um, Brenda, thank you so much. I have to tell you, <laughs> I kind of make up my own way to do things. So everything I do is kind of different than everybody else. And I try to find the easiest way to achieve what I'm doing because I don't like to stress my students. I don't like to stress myself, but I don't like to stress my students. 
so it's easier to find a way. Next month, I know we're not online, but next month, I'm gonna show them, my students here, how to do what I find to be very easy clouds. It took me a long time to come up with my technique because clouds were very hard to teach. Now, I did here, maybe I'll do a little bit here. Like you don't have to do just one spot, okay? So maybe I'll do here. As long as I keep a light highlight. Ah, oh, Debbie, you're so good. I have to behave because Debbie's here and she's my boss. <laughs> Although I always behave. Um, and she just wrote in the comments, so anybody who's local knows we're at the Herkimer Center. And I believe we're there through the end of the year. I think we have the room for the end of, through the end of the year. So that's good. And then maybe the other buildings. So we're making three buildings. And maybe by then for next year, we can have one of the new buildings, which would be so nice. And then at the end of all that, we'll have a nice, big, beautiful library. So that'll be exciting. I know it's not exciting for anybody who's local and I'm sorry. But you can move here, except for Brenda, because you're in Canada. <laughs> so I think that would be a bit of a trek for you. You know? So you see how pretty that looks? So I've got that whole side of that wing done. Thank you. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. Now, I know you probably see it sideways. You have to remember, I have my camera on my piece, but I also have it up on my iPad and you're a time delayed. So you're behind where I actually am. So if I go off a camera or something, I don't notice it right away. So if I'm crooked or sideways, you should be the same way. You, your hand should be comfortable when you're painting. So I'm doing the same thing. I didn't wash my, hand, my brush very good. Now, when I said one side needs to match the other, one side does need to match the other in color. So I don't have to have my paint. If my paint is on the top here, it doesn't necessarily need to be on the top here, but it has to be purple. Okay, so in color, the wings have to match. Where the veins are don't have to match because they don't always match. <laughs> You're right, Nanette. No blue bonnets. I agree. I was in Texas teaching last month or the month before, and we went on a blue bonnet hunt, and they were so beautiful. I have so many pictures, so we're going to do that. Marie, my husband is better. I have to teach the end of this month uh, in upstate, and... Then we will do lives. I'm going to do, here's just an FYI for anybody. I'm gonna do Hobby Lobby has a big watermelon. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a watermelon, we'll do some faux finishing, we'll have some fun with it. And secret on creative innovations, I'll be there in August. Shh, it's a secret. So you see what I'm doing? I'm creating 
as I'm going. I'm not worried about the other side where the color is. I'm only worried about what the color is. I'm laying my color. I'm laying my, my glitter. Again, I'm just side loading the brush. So there's just a little bit of paint and I'm just tapping. And then I'm coming in fully down. I'm not holding my brush sideways like this. Let me make sure I'm on screen. All my bristles are down and I'm just blending it in. Fabric's a really fun thing to paint and luckily it's back on the upswing. I do, I love to paint on fabric. I have always loved to paint on fabric. Aw, oh, thank you, Tony Ann. And I'm here. And I'm here. So the whole area, and I know you'll hear me say the same thing, but that's because this is very repetitious. And if you feel comfortable doing the top of each section or the bottom of each section and they all match, that's okay too. I just can't put that much effort into paying attention to where I am, if that makes any sense. But it's all, you see all the glitter? And when this is done, the glitter is just gorgeous. So some of my black lines are faded. And then I'll tell you a trick that my, my students at the library didn't know, so maybe you don't. But if you're, if you get too much paint and your lines look yucky and you don't like them, go in and line them again. You have to wait until your paint is dry. Now, here's a tip that I thought everybody knew. I know you're gonna tell me you don't know. And I take for granted that you do. If you use a marker, any marker, while your paint is wet, it's going to clog the marker. A lot of people think that it's, that the marker is no good or it's old or whatever. That's not it. It's clogging the marker, okay? So what you do is you take an emery board. Let me just get one so I can show you. You get an emery board, which I have so many of them. Oh, well. You get an emery board, which I buy at the dollar store. You take your marker, and I very rarely use Sharpies. Don't go this way. On the side, go like this until you get the ink back. You see that? And you're unclogging the marker. It'll work for quite a while. Um... But it's because your marker's clogged. So an emery board, but again, on the side or you'll dull the point. Okay. So I don't know who knows that and who doesn't. Uh, Marie, yes. Remind me and I'll post it. Hi, Janet. And thank you all for being here with me. I've missed being online. I've missed lives. I've missed being here. It's just been a really long year, but life is getting back to normal and I'll be able to start doing things again just in time for the summer when I don't want to do anything, <laughs> but I am. I've missed you all. Now come in and maybe I'll do and see how I'm just moving my piece. I'm gonna come in, I'm just laying my paint. The trick is your paint underneath your glitter, but it's got the paint in it. It's got the enchanted shimmer in it. So it is paint. That's wet. You're using pressure and you're side loading your brush. If you're not side loading your brush, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have that whole section 
that's going to be purple or green or whatever color. It's going to be a color. Now, keep in mind, part of the way I would normally tell you, oh, well, that's okay. We'll just go dry brush it back into it. You really can't, well, you can, but you'll lose all the glitter. So it's really important in doing this. We've created our natural highlights. After we do all of these sections, then I'll show you, we'll do the um, body. And there is you're done. Like there's no more that you need to be doing to make it work. I don't have to put in highlights. I don't have to put in shadows. I don't have to, I don't have to do any of that. It's repetition. Once you get it, it's real easy. And you see? I'm just scrubbing because I have too much there. But I keep blending until I fade. So now I have that graduation. You're having trouble with the colors. <laughs> See, Marie, I say things that I think everybody knows. So that's what happens to your markers and that's how you fix them. Emily, what are you having trouble with your colors on? Are you wet enough in your section? So you're putting a good amount of paint here. And are you loading your brush on the corner? So answer those questions. I'll watch the comments and then I can tell you why you're having trouble. And anybody who's painting with me or paints after... I would love to see your pieces. It always makes me so happy to know that I've made people happy. That's why we do this, isn't it? And side loading, I'm tapping so I don't have too much paint because I can always go put more on. I'll come up here and I'm blending. My brush is Excuse me, my brush is flat. The screen I'm watching on is so dark and I don't know why. Um, and then I'm just blending. So you see what I'm doing? So now I look, I love green and purple together. And I say, okay, what's next? Do I want everything to match? Do I, like, do I want this whole section? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out a little bit of orange, because I do love orange, not really. But I'm doing a Halloween piece, so. Okay, so let me go sideways, I'll go over here. And I'm gonna come in here. Now this, I kind of just fudge it. This is where you would use um, a smaller brush so that you, you don't have to worry. If you get your paints on the background, it is there forever. Then you would have to make a ladybug or um, a branch or, you know, you'd have to fudge around something and put it in. Okay, I'm going to turn it upside down. I always pull towards me. Uh, I always pull towards me. So I ha I turn my piece so that I'm pulling towards me. And I'm blending. I'm going to use orange here. If anybody has any questions, please, please, please just type them in the comments. I will. I try periodically to look. If I don't answer you now, I will 
after class. So you will absolutely have your answer. I always try to help. And like I said, I'm time delayed. So if I'm off camera, um, it takes me, I don't know how far time delayed it is. Um, but it takes me that time to realize that I'm off camera. Well, that's better, I can say. Emily, did you figure out why you're having trouble with your colors? And I'm here. And again, so I brushed with my mixture. And now just on the corner of my brush, I'm picking up and I'm just tapping so that I don't have a big blob. Because if you have a big blob, you have more paint than you think you have and you'll lose your highlight. This bag is very lightweight. I bought it at Hobby Lobby. Um, but my original is on a pillow from Ikea. So I did that. Um, it's heavier, it makes no difference. You can do it on Anything, anything will work. I'm gonna pick up some Indian turquoise. And again, when I put out the color list, I really put use whatever you want because you can really use whatever you want. There's no, let's see, I'll try to move this a little closer for you. Oh, so I just moved my out light. You can see that shimmer now, can't you? So, um, there are no set colors. As much as I'd like to say, use green, use orange, use Indian turquoise. I have done, I showed you my smock, I've showed you my pillow. My original that I had up was my pillow. Um, and if I'm honest, I don't think I've used the same colors on any of them. I kind of just, whatever mood I'm in, sometimes I like the pastel -y colors, sometimes I like the bright colors. Sometimes I like duller colors. I did a peacock, I did, um, I have a couple of them. One of my students, and she's probably on, I don't know, she wants me to do a dragonfly. So we'll see. A dragonfly just shut off my eyes so mine is not the same on both sides. All right, Emily, if you're doing the technique right and you're getting it in, it really doesn't matter if both sides are the same color. It's okay. It's your butterfly. So don't be upset with yourself. You can easily have a butterfly with different different colors all through the wings. Think about it as it could be flying and shimmering and it, the sun is picking up different colors. I'm sure that it's beautiful. I don't want you beating yourself up because I think... I know that you are having problems, but honestly, I think you've been doing fantastic. And I mean that. So for anybody who's new to me here, I don't say things I don't mean. I mean them, but um, I'll also tell you, if you send me a picture and say, Linda, can you critique this? I will but I'll be honest with you. <laughs> so if you want me to say, oh, it's beautiful, tell me first because I kind of don't do things that way. But you can you see all that glitter in there? 
Like, I really have a lot of glitter. But that's because, and I have to mix some more. That's because, and I, if you notice, I always move my piece when I mix. Or I never hold my palette over my piece. Because if I get it on my background, it's there. And sometimes I do and I make a mistake, but... I don't put myself in a position to definitely make a mistake. I try not to. You know. Oh, I got a yucky there. And you can see, I like, and then I move it. And then I'll move my piece back. So that I don't have it anywhere. And then I'll come in and I'll go back to exactly what I was doing. I'm putting, brushing my mixture on. It does, Roberta, doesn't it? The glitter really gives it a really, really pretty, pretty shimmer. And I have to say, like for a housewarming gift or a, like if you did it on a pillow or something, it's really a great housewarming gift. I've given them multiple times and we have a lot of fun with them. And I pick up on the corner of my brush. Again, I'm still in the blue and I'll have to reline some of these lines because my glitter's messy, because I have a lot of glitter. And I'm turning my piece for two reasons, to keep my hand out of the wet paint. But, and like my green up here is totally dry. Some of my purple is dry, but my green is already dry. So Marie, that's why we can't just paint the whole thing in glitter, because it won't work. And you see how pretty it's looking? Is the glitter just glitter or liquid with glitter? Can you show both bottles, please? Absolutely. So I have taken, because this is me, to using Enchanted Shimmer. I love the Enchanted Shimmer. It has glitter in it. It has ultra fine glitter. Glamour Dust Liquid glitter has glitter in it also but I find that this is much smoother and I really like it I use it I I've taken to using this it comes in a bunch of colors but they're they're more transparent so where the glamour dust like gold is gold that's more translucent, like this is more translucent gold if you were using gold. So I use that and then I add the Glamour Dust fine glitter to it. And I, there's no ratio to it. I just kind of pull it in until it's shiny enough for me. There's no right or wrong. Just don't put so much in that it gets clumpy. That's all. And I'm just blending it till it's blended. That's pretty. So now I say, what's my next color? So my next color, because I just pick up all different colors, I'm going to use... Not that you're going to have, but it's bright. Oh, no, that's not true. I'm going to use bright coral. Now, I have bright coral. Bright coral has been discontinued. But don't ever get rid of your discontinued paint because you can always use it. And even if a teacher or your design doesn't call for that color, there's nothing wrong with using a color you love. So, and bright coral is a color I use a lot. So, I've got a mix for it. So, I'll come in. And I'm going to move here. And let it go. 
is for my business. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. I am very honest. I don't know if it's a New York thing or... But I, listen, I truly believe if you're here for class, you want to learn. You don't want somebody to say, oh, that's beautiful. When it's not. That's one of my pet peeves, teachers who do that. And I wouldn't call them out on it, but I don't do that. You see, I'm creating this beautiful piece. And like I said, this is where you lay your color. And if you noticed, I'm, the consistent thing is I'm putting my glitter down. And the consistent thing is I'm side loading my brush. Other than that, I'm not putting paint in the same place. I'm not matching. I'm matching my color side to side, but I'm not matching where I'm putting it. I'm not too concerned, but I'm blending it until it blends. Okay. Now I'm gonna come over here and I think I'm gonna use a darker pink. So this is dark rose. And I just pulled from what I had. Does that mean that you need to go get all these colors? No. I will say I stand by and not for any other reason than I truly believe in it. I stand by So Soft Paint. It really is quite fabulous. Well, I don't really like that, do I? Well, that looks ugly. So I put this down and it clashes here. So I don't really like that. So watch what I'm gonna do. I may regret this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna pick up some red on the corner of my brush. And this is how you fix things. All right, Debbie, so here's what I'll tell you. You can use Americana. Oh, that's better. See, because now it doesn't clash here. You can use Americana. I have found in teaching, keep that in mind, that my students, they struggle on fabric if they're using Americana. It doesn't flow the same. It will, if you use fabric medium, it will be a little more pliable than just using it straight out of the bottle. It will be permanent, that I can tell you. But I have found that my students complain that it's harder to work with. Um, I'm, I love my So Soft. I paint a ton of fabric. See, now this is wider than I would want. Um, so for me, it's an, in, an investment that I would, wouldn't even think twice. Now I'm taking a clean brush and I'm pulling some off and then I'm gonna come back in with just my glitter and I'll brush over it to blend it. That's how I got some of that out. So I can't tell you to invest in it because... I don't like to tell people what to do with their money. And anybody who's listening that says, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Just keep it to yourself. But seriously, I don't like to tell people what to do with their money. So it's totally up to you. If you're going to paint other fabric pieces, if it were me, I would invest in it. Even if you do a couple a month or, you know, whatever your budget says, you know, to do. I, I stand by the So Soft and not because anybody's telling me I should tell you that, but because I truly, truly, truly believe in it. And it's very easy to work with. Now, the Enchanted Shimmers is not so soft, 
but I find they worked they work fabulous on fabric. And they work fabulous on everything. So you will see a lot of my new pattern packets. Um, almost all of them have enchanted shimmers in them because I really am loving the enchanted shimmers. And you see how pretty, I switched to red pepper. I switched to red pepper. Okay, so then I'm gonna clean out. And you see how I'm moving right along? And we're here, and if you're painting along with me, you may be keeping up, you may not. I hope if you're not painting with me, you're not bored. Um, there's a lot to learn, but it's it's very repetitious on this, and it's very easy. So nobody would look at this and say, oh, Linda, you used one brush and one stroke. Because really, I've used the same brush. I have not switched brushes. I put two brushes on the brush list because for you to go into smaller areas. If you feel comfortable not, that's fine. But I have not... Um, I've used one brush, I've used one technique. And you don't have to use 900 colors. You could do this in one color. Enchanted shimmers, I think, don't don't quote me, so, so, okay, talk, Linda. So soft, I think you can only get a deco art now. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. Enchanted shimmers, you can get at Hobby Lobby. That I know. I don't go to Michael's anymore, so I can't answer you if it's there. Um, but Hobby Lobby has it. And DecoArt has a sale right now. Because I just went on to do something. And I think it's... Don't quote me, but it was the other day. 30% off of everything, I think. So it was a really good deal. Uh, Marie, do I have fabric patterns? I don't know. I will, here's a secret, <laughs> not a very good secret anymore, is it? Um, I have been working on my website, which accidentally was published, but um, they will all be going up. And I've done my tulip bag. I just did the Jonquil bag, which I know you have. Um, I'm doing pumpkins. I did, I just did a daffodil. I just did hydrangeas on fabric last night. I did it on a bag and I did it on fabric. So one's for my daughter's wedding and one's a submission for net for next year because I fell really far behind last year. So let me get my button gear now. So will there be, yes, there's going to be, cause I paint a lot of fabric. So there absolutely will be. And like I said, I have somebody else, somebody made, bless her heart, somebody did my website for me. And one of my friends is putting everything up and because I am technologically challenged. But as I say, but I can paint. Nanette can vouch for that. <laughs> I was in Texas and they kept making fun of me because that that's my catchphrase, but I can paint. Who needs to run a computer when you can paint, right? Uh, let's see, Emily. All right, if you need me, let me know. Yes, it's lindaroconnelldesigns.com, Roberta. Uh, let me see. Where's my pillow? I'll show you, Marie. Shh, don't tell. So that's that, and there's the hydrangeas. And it's a pillow, and it's, I'm doing them, I'm doing all different pillows for her. Did it not go through? Am I frozen? No, there you go. Um, for my daughter's wedding favors. And I'm gonna do some pumpkins. I'm gonna do that tonight. But fabric painting used to be really big. 
and people got away from it and I don't know why because it's really it's a lot of fun you can okay so if you live in the same world I live in meaning creative messy world I am forever getting paint on my clothes so years ago and now I just paint things over them so when I have a blob of paint I'll paint a butterfly or I'll paint you know, I have a whole load. I have a friend in Australia and she did a koala and I did it in fabric and I did it on a smock. So I have a koala. And Janice Miller has, um, it's very old. I don't think she has it anymore, but it's a paint palette. So I have a paint palette and I did daffodils and I don't always do it this way. You know, some... I do wet on wet, some I flow, I mean. But there are so many ways. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. That's what my daughter said when I showed her. I said, oh, you want some of those? Because I cannot make favors for everybody and have them all match. It'll drive me out of my mind. I gotta do all different things. Okay, two sections left in a body. So, do you see what I did so far? I cleaned my brush in between each time. I've changed my coloring, but they're matching side to side. Oh, I keep forgetting you go sideways. They're matching side to side. Okay. Now I have these two sections. So these two sections, maybe I'll do... I have a whole bunch of colors on my table because I was painting last night. I'll do yellow. And you saw over here I didn't like the pink. So I quickly just went over it with another color. And that's possible too. I'm going to do yellow and if I don't like it, I'm going to, I think, go back to green. And that'll pull the whole thing together. So I'm brushing the whole section. Okay, Roberta, just an FYI, you can use fluid acrylics on fabric. So if you want a watercolor look on fabric, you can use fluid Decorwart's Media Line Fluid Acrylics. They are transparent. Water them down, it'll give you the watercolor effect. Just be careful they're not too wet, that they'll bleed onto your untouched fabric. But um, you can use you can use fluid acrylics, and you can ink it. Debbie Welty, she inks her pieces, and then she uses fluid acrylic on fabric. She likes that, and it looks very pretty. You know, and I'll come in with the yellow. Mm, yeah, I guess that's pretty. Like I said, I just, I don't really, like this will end up to be a pattern packet, but, and it'll be the colors I use, but you can really use any color. I kind of just play and I just, I see where my color takes me, you know? And if you don't like painting on fabric, I would say shame on you, but my boss was here. She might still be. But no, seriously, if you don't like, you can do this on a canvas or on something else. Or you, know, you don't have to do it on fabric. Okay. Now, Roberta, here is the answer to your question. Roberta asked, do you have to heat set? Many years ago, Deco Art made so soft like this in the small bottles, okay? They're one ounce bottles. The answer to that question is yes, you have to heat set. Then they moved to the two ounce bottles a couple years ago. The answer to this is no, you don't have to heat set the big bottles. 
So it just depends on what you're using. If you heat set, and you do not have to with the big bottles. I don't even heat set the little bottles, I'll be honest with you. Many, many years ago I did, but now I kind of just mix. But if you do, just take a piece of fabric. I use one of my smocks, so I use an old shirt. And um, just lay it on top of the design and take an iron across it. Your fabric is washable. Can you put it in the dryer? Yes. And I say that because I've done it many times. Um, they suggest you hang it to dry. So whichever way you're more comfortable. I can only say that I have put it in the dryer and I have not had a problem. So you got to kind of weigh what you're comfortable with. Um, but absolutely, it's washable. Wait 24 hours before you wash it. Sometimes, I try to wash it on delicate, but I wash most of my, my own shirts and stuff on delicate. But I have put it through the regular wash and it's fine. So it's not a, you have nothing to worry about. Now I have a very colorful butterfly. I'm going to put it this way. Not only do, um, you can use a paper bag, Roberta. I, I just use a piece of fabric, but you don't have to heat set anymore. So, I have done my whole butterfly. I know I have to do my body, which we're going to do the same, so I'm going to show you. But you can see all the glitter, but you can also see how some of the areas I lost my marker. Again, you don't have to do the marker until after you're done anyway, but not tonight. Don't do it tonight. I'll just come in with the marker and go right over it, and it'll pop. So here's this, here's my original, and I'm gonna hold it because I don't wanna get paint on it. Here's my original. So you see the difference in the lining? This I went back and I did. So this is on a pillow from Ikea, and it sits on my bed. Wow, well, it's one of the 50 that sit on my bed. So now we're gonna come in and we're gonna take black. You need black. Be careful with black. Do I have black? What color is this? Yes. Let's throw that one away. Oh, one second, gotta open it. Again, I'm using So Soft, but I use a lot of So Soft. And you can see, so on all of them, that's how much I'm putting out. You can see I've used almost nothing. So if you're a better planner than me, you can just put out like the tiniest drop and not worry about it. I'm just a bad planner. So you might want to, okay, let me speak. You might want to switch to a smaller brush. I will so that I could show you. I just manipulate my brush. So I'm going to pop down to a two. It's a little bit harder to corner load with a smaller brush. That's why I never suggest it. I'm gonna start with his head. Let me do it so that it's straight for you. Just one second. Oh, and let me tell you. Aw, oh, thanks, Bev. I have wax paper in between because you will see the paint goes through and if I didn't have wax paper, it would go on to the other side of the bag because the fabric is thin. After you're done painting, if you're going to heat set it, if you're not going to heat set it, tomorrow morning, get that wax paper out. Do not, do not, do not, do not use cardboard. People use cardboard and what happens is the paint goes through and it sticks to the cardboard and it pulls the layer off the cardboard 
and then you have cardboard on the inside, which if it's a bag, I guess it's not a big deal. But if it's a shirt, it's a big deal. So I'm going to start with the head and I'm going to put my glitter on. I'm going to corner load. Now with a small brush, it's hard, so be really careful. Just a tiny bit. And I'm going to come along the bottom of the head and blend it up so I'm still keeping my highlight up here, but I'm, I've am i got the darkness down here. Okay, I'm gonna take the body. Marie, when you paint it, pop me off a picture. And I'm gonna coat the body. Now, you can play with the background. Sometimes I wet the background and I put color in. Sometimes I stencil it, sometimes I leave it. My other pillow that I had out, I just left it. Um, so I'm coating the whole body. And I'm going to corner load again. But remember, if you go down to a small brush, you have to be really careful in loading because it's a small area. Little teeny tiny bit. I'm going to come down the left side. Now we're going to come down, and I'm going to show you both. We're going to come down the left side and the right side. So be really careful how much is across your brush because you want to keep that natural highlight in the middle. And you see what I'm doing? I'm really careful. The bigger the brush, the better you can control the corner load, which is why whenever anybody paints with me, I never let them float with less than a 12. For just that reason, I'm gonna switch it. I'm probably completely upside down, which I won't know for a minute. But you should be doing exactly what I'm doing. So if I'm upside down, you should be, so that you can Pull, I pull towards me. If you pull towards you, you should be the same direction. If you pull away from you, you should be opposite me. And I'm coming up the opposite side. So my paint is still blending in, but I have that natural highlight. Let me turn it. I know I'm making you all dizzy. I'm sorry. So you see how I still have that natural highlight. Now I can tell you I am stuck to my wax paper. So I'm going to come in now. I'm not going to take it out because it's still wet. And I'm just going to do that so it's not stuck to it. Because it's more of a pain in the neck to get it off. Now I've already signed it. I've already done everything that I have to. And that's how I do my fabric and this one really I should have done it in red white and blue maybe I'll do one in red white and blue wouldn't that be fun we could do red white and blue oh, that's what we're gonna do <laughs> so you could have a patriotic bag a patriotic butterfly that would be a fun thing to do you know so I know we're done early do you guys have any questions tell me I'm happy to answer them Now, if you were painting on fabric a different way, you could base coat and then put in, um, you could work wet and blend your color together or you can float. So it kind of just depends on what I want to do. When I do glitter, I work this way. If you had no glitter and this was all purple, you could come in and you could dry brush your light in here, okay? You could float this in, all right? So because we don't want to dull our glitter is why we don't go in and we don't dry brush, okay? You can't dry brush with glitter, the glitter, the enchanted shimmers, 
they're transparent. So um, that's why we do it this way. So you get your natural highlights, you get your shading. The important thing, I'm just gonna go through it with you again. The important thing is that you coat your area and you side load your brush. A lot of pressure, a nine pressure on the brush. And when I say a nine, I mean, here's the ferrule. So if I'm all the way like this, as hard as I can push, that's a 10. So pretty much like this. I want a good amount of pressure so that you're blending the paint into the glitter paint and you're getting this graduation of color. You don't want a line in there. That's really important, okay? Pick your colors, play with your colors. Maybe tonight I'm sitting here. Well, I'm supposed to be doing a pumpkin, but maybe I'll do a red, white, and blue one because that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. And then we'll have something for the 4th of July, which is coming soon, I think. I don't know, I get so confused. So that's where we are. Uh, Debbie, it is the White Enchanted Shimmer. Now, let me just show you something since I have you and we're not, we're okay on time. So here's the gold and here's the green. So if you look at the bottom, you can't really tell all that much, okay? So here's my white. Let me just move this because you all know me. Here's the gold. And here's the green. Then there's other colors. There's purple. So you see, it's not... It's not like the glamour dust where the glamour dust paint where it's the color. This is like the pearl. And then when it dries, you'll see a hint of it. So you can't tell the difference between here and here. Okay. So if you want a gold tinge, use the gold. If you want a green tinge, sometimes it depends on what I'm painting. I did see this is the gold. So this is gold. This is green. This is white. I did a snowman and I did a fire and I used the orange. No, did I use orange? I, I used gold. I used the gold on the orange. And it just gives it a, a tint of it. So you can use any one. I use the white on everything. But I use the gold. I use the green. There's magenta. Um, but here's something. There's regular Enchanted, so there's Enchanted, which is iridescent top coat, and there's Enchanted Shimmer, which is still the iridescent, but it's got the glitter in it, okay? So if you look at the label between the two, so it says Shimmer here. Oh, I should turn it this way, right? I'm sorry, I keep forgetting your, I'm sideways, you're not. Wait, it'll turn. I know you'll laugh. So just make sure it says shimmer and it's not plain enchanted. But Hobby Lobby has them. Um, when they're not on sale, they're $2.99 because that's where I bought this. Okay. And then if you do holographic illusions, that's the big chunky glitter. So just so you know the difference. All right, I think we're good. Anybody have any questions? Let me just check. Um, oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, Deb, thanks for hanging with me. All right, all right, I'll do red, white, and blue. How much fun will that be? And I think you should all do red, white, and blue. I will do red, white, and blue, and I will share it, and I want you all to do one. Do something and then share it with me. Let me pop you around. Uh, wait a minute. You could see here. Um, you giggle. You can all tell how much I hate being on camera, can't you? So thank you all for being here. Deb, the library, thank you for putting us here. We do love being here. Um, so... <laughs>
<laughs> so we have a, a thank you goes to all of you. Thanks for hanging with me. Have a wonderful June for those of you who don't, um, that aren't here. I will go back to live. So we'll talk about that on my page and not here. All right. Have a good night. Thank you so much for being here. If you have questions, please, please, please just let me know. You can come in here and I will gladly answer or you can message me and I'll answer you that way. All right. Thanks, you guys. See you later.